I've been a Protestant pastor for the last 18 years, and I began falling in love with Mary while I was a student in seminary. My family attended a United Methodist Church. I was raised in the United Methodist family. United Methodism was all I knew. And I was very evangelical in my approach to the Bible, to God, to prayer. Mary was not a part of my life at that time. I discerned what I thought was a call to Methodist ministry, attended seminary at Duke Divinity School, and I had never really considered the Virgin Mary before. And I began to see her in the documents of the faith, the patristics, Augustine, as we were reading the great orthodox treatises of the past. I came across words such as these, quote, Mary is the noblest gem in Christianity after Christ. She is wisdom, holiness, personified. We can never honor Mary enough. And it comes as a surprise to people when I identify who said that. That was Martin Luther, the great reformer of the Protestant Reformation. Swingley, another Swiss reformer, says that the more we honor Christ, the more by default we will honor his mother which led me to believe that honoring Mary in the Christian life, this is normal. This is what has always been. It was an aberration. The Protestant reformers did not intend even Protestants to dismiss Mary from their devotion to Christ. She's supposed to be a part in it and a part of it. In the second semester, I wrote my first paper in Theology 101 on the Immaculate Conception, that she was immaculate in her conception. Her birth was without sin, an original sin. And at first I thought, well, there's no way. I had those typical objections, and I began reading the arguments for it, and I was struck by it. Hail, full of grace. And then I realized that the participle used for full of grace is, hail, you who have always been maximally full of grace. She wasn't sanctified in the moment. You can trace Mary's fullness of grace to the promise that God Himself gave in Genesis chapter 3. There will be hostility between the serpent and this woman. How could He have hostility toward this woman if she were one of His captives? At that point, I realized this changes everything. And if it's true, then what else does the church teach about Mary that is also true? And then that helped me explore more and more about Mary. And I began to realize the parallels, the new Eve who collaborates with the new Adam. And that's something I had never seen before, but yet it's there by the second century of the church's existence, that Mary was not some passive agent in the story. She was an active collaborator in the story of our redemption. After I graduated from seminary, it was my first year as a pastor. I was serving a small church in North Carolina and I prayed my first rosary. It was awkward, but I realized that I have just seen the stories of the gospel, the very life of Jesus in ways I have never seen before. And that began to change everything for me. I began to pray the rosary as a practice daily and it enriched my preaching. This is not a woman whom we should fear at all. St. Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Who fulfilled that more than any other? Substantially, it was Mary. James says, for instance, that we should welcome the implanted Word of God into our souls. And then it hit me. Well, what did Mary do? She welcomed the implanted Word, the Word of God Himself into her life. Paul says that we should clothe ourselves with humility. Well, the Word that became flesh clothed Himself with the flesh of the Virgin Mary. And I began to see this everywhere, and I couldn't ignore it. That there is nothing that we can say about the Christian life, about what it truly means to live in union with Christ that is not in some way Marian in shape. And so we have to take seriously the Jesus who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, what was the way Jesus came to reach us? His way was through Mary.
Jesus said to his disciples, I will not leave you as an orphan. An orphan is a child without a mother and a father. John chapter 19, what does Jesus say to the beloved disciple? Behold your mother. He gives the beloved disciple his mother. It is the will of Jesus. It is his very will to take Mary as our mother, just as we take God as our father. We are gonna be closer in union to Jesus than we could ever think possible. Soon after my consecration, I was still a Protestant pastor at the time, but my wife was changed, my children were changed, and my wife was called to be in union with Christ through the Catholic Church, and I followed soon thereafter, and it was because I believe Mary called me to a deeper union with Jesus in the Eucharist through the Catholic Church. She's changed my life, she will change yours. I was radically transformed. I began to see Jesus with a greater devotion, a greater love and tenderness. I was so enriched. And I realized that my love for Jesus could never exceed the love that Mary has for Jesus. And then I also realized that my love for Mary could never exceed Jesus' love for her. So what was I afraid of? And so I have made it my mission to help people share in the fullness of the life of Christ, learning how to love Him the way Mary loves Him. This is not to take away from Jesus. This is to draw us closer to Him. The angel said to Saint Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary into your home. It is my belief that Mary is now calling our Protestant brothers and sisters to herself. She does not want to leave us as orphan. And I make an appeal to every Protestant watching this video. If you have any hesitation, if there's any reservation in you at all, reflect on those words of the angel. Do not be afraid to take Mary into your home. She will only enrich your experience of Jesus. She will only enrich your discipleship. She will only enrich your love of Christ. I love Mary because Jesus loved Mary, and I want to be more like Jesus Christ. This was a very powerful video, and I want to thank the patrons who made it possible. May God bless you and Our Lady protect you. If you're a Protestant and you're watching this and you're struggling internally, I'm going to include Shane's contact info in the description below. God bless you, God love you, and you can check out more videos right now.